Good morning, everyone, and it's good to be with you uh, this Sunday morning. And uh, I know this looks a little bit different because it's the month of August. And in August, my dad takes the month off and it's much needed. We ask for your prayers. Uh, right now, he's going through a new normal uh, without his wife, my mom. Um, and so it, things are much different for him. And things have sped up as it relates to the coronavirus and, and all of the, the workload that has been on him. Uh, technology moves fast, so it gives an opportunity for him to actually have to do more uh, with, the, with the amount of calls and the amount of Zoom calls and the uh, amount of interviews that he's had to do, especially during this time of pandemic and unrest. So I'd ask that you please keep my dad uh, in your prayers as he gets much needed R&R this season uh, and this month in particular before he gets uh, revved up ready to go in September. But in the meantime, uh, you've got me. And so we're going to take the, the next month starting today and we're going to dive into God's word. I want to start with the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is what we're going to be talking about all month, actually. And I want to go ahead and jump into that. And today, uh, my message to you is to put it down, to put it down. And we're looking at Joshua chapter seven, verse one, Joshua chapter seven, verse one. This is what it says. It says, but the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully in regard to the things under the ban. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. So today we're going to talk about how important it is to put it down. This first verse of chapter seven comes on the heels of of a big victory against Jericho. They just beat Jericho by a plan of God. And, and it says that Joshua's name was famous in all of the land. But then when you get to Joshua chapter seven, verse one, there's a contrast that shows up. The first word is, but, but is a contrast. That means what I'm about to say is totally different than what's really been going on. What's really been going on is that God has been with the people and they have been successful for a long time. What's really been going on is that they just beat Jericho and they uh, were circumcised in chapter five, coming under God's rule. In chapter one, they got a new leader. In chapter two, they got saved by their enemy when Rahab hid the spies. You know things are going well for you when your enemy has your back. In chapter three, uh, they crossed the Jordan River. When you get to chapter four, they're thanking God. They have the stones of remembrance. Like I said, in chapter five, they were circumcised, which means they're having the, the physical evidence or the symbol that they are coming under the covenant of God. And in chapter six, they have a great victory by a plan given to them by God in order to overcome one of the battles, the first battle uh, of Joshua, first fruits victory that they had. So chapter after chapter after chapter, they're experiencing the favor of God in their life. And then you get to Joshua chapter seven, verse one, and it starts with a big but. However, conversely, things are about to change. There's a contrast that's about to take place in their circumstances. And the reason why there's a contrast that's about to take place in their circumstances is because Achan took something that was banned. He took something that was underneath the ban and he took it after having victory or inside of a victory that God had given him. I want to make sure that we understand and that we have this clear because this is a big deal in Scripture that embedded in every victory that we are given are things that are banned to us but belong to God. I want to make sure you heard me embedded in every victory that God gives us in our life are things that belong to God and are banned to us. And if we start taking things that belong to God, rest assured that the anger of the Lord will burn against his people because there are things like God's glory that belong to him, even if he's giving us victory. In Joshua chapter six, verse 16, he says, go take the city. The city is yours. But in Joshua chapter six, verse 19, he says, but the articles under the ban are mine. The gold, the silver, uh, the iron, the bronze, those things belong to me. And those were the things that Achan took. Achan was greedy. He wasn't OK with just receiving the favor of God. 
He wasn't okay with just receiving uh, the victory that God had already given him. He wanted to take things that belonged to God inside of the victory that he had just received. That's called being greedy. And a lot of times you find this in scripture where people go over and beyond what God has given. And then a contrast shows up. You can look at Adam and Eve. If you go back to Genesis chapter two and three and you look that God said that you from every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat that. That 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 one doesn't belong to you. So I'm giving you victory, Adam and Eve. I'm giving you uh, a freedom with limited regulation. I'm giving you all of the trees that you can eat. I'm giving you the garden that you can sustain and guard. I'm giving you that to cultivate. I'm giving you everything that you need. I'm giving you perfection. All of these victories I'm giving you, but Adam and Eve overstepped the boundary. They went and took the fruit and they ate of it and a contrast showed up. All of a sudden there's dissension in the marriage. All of a sudden there's pain in childbirth. All of a sudden there's toil in the land. All of a sudden things change. Cain kills Abel and chaos ensues. By the time you get to Genesis chapter six, God is telling a man he needs to build because we're about to start this thing all over again. Why? Because they weren't satisfied with receiving the victory that God had already given them. They wanted to take something that was banned inside of the victory to go farther than God said that they should go. It doesn't stop there. You can look at David. David in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 4 says he saw Bathsheba and he took. And at the moment that he took, he lost everything. I wish someone would have told David and told Adam and Eve. I wish someone would have let them know that there are things that belong to God. There are things that don't belong to you. God had already given David victory after victory. He had already made him first in line when he was last in line when, when, when Samuel came to choose him. He already gave him victory over Goliath. He already gave him victory when it was time for him to get away from Saul and all the time he was chased by that battle that was coming after him like many of us are chased by things and we continue to overcome. He already gave him victory over the Philistines and now David couldn't control himself and stay in stewardship mode of receiving what God is giving. David saw something and took for himself. If someone would have just told him that right after that he would become a murderer. If someone would have just told him that right after that he would lose a child. If someone would have told him uh, that right after that he would have one son kill another son and another son come after his throne. And all of that came at the moment that he took and wasn't satisfied with what God had already given. So I wish somebody would have told Adam and Eve. I wish somebody would have told David. What about Lucifer? Lucifer was the anointed cherub in scripture. Lucifer was 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 second in command. Lucifer was the, the highest ranking angel. He already was given victory. But based on Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14, he wanted to take God's position. And that was a banned position. It belongs to God. Be satisfied, content with the victory that God has already given you. Because if you take beyond that, Scripture says in Luke, I saw Satan, Lucifer, fall to the earth like lightning. He fell because he took a great contrast showed up for him. You can go to Ananias and Sapphira. They were given victory. They sold the land, but then they kept some. They took some for themselves and they didn't give it all to God. They didn't give it all to him. And because they didn't give it all to him, I wish somebody would have told them they even lost their lives. All of these contrasts are showing up and all of these people in the Bible because they didn't sit in the victory that God had given them as a steward. They started taking for themselves to become an owner. And once we move from stewardship to ownership, we've overstepped our boundaries. Achan put it down. It says there is a great contrast that is coming chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter. They have received victory in the book of Joshua. They come, came under the authority of God in the book of Joshua chapter after chapter. And then chapter seven shows up before they head into a battle, which we'll get in in future weeks. And the first word is but. 
because Achan took the things inside of the victory that belong to God. My question to you is, what are those things that we might be taking, that we might be taking ownership of when we're supposed to be a steward? We're supposed to be receiving victory, not taking things inside of the victory or taking things to try to give ourselves victory. This happens a lot in our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are good plans, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope, not bad plans. But I hope you understand that he knows the plans that he has for you. So the worst thing that we can do is go take up our own plans. Because when you go take your own plans, when you're supposed to be receiving the plan from God, I can promise you this, a great contrast is going to show up in the plans that you just tried to take for yourself. Many of us have had victory in our businesses. We've had victory in things that we've been able to start by the grace of God and the talent that he's given us, being able to go to work even during a pandemic and, and some of us being able to uh, provide and he's allowing you to have the check. He's allowing you to earn the money, but the tithe belongs to God. That's why Malachi 3.8 says, shall a man rob God? You can only rob God of something that's not yours to begin with. But Christians have been taking plans and taking tithe. I mean, we have each other, but we're also taking marriage when it's a covenant of God. I'm taking what I think it means to be a man and, and to be a leader, not allowing myself to receive what it is to be a man and a leader in from God's word. I'm taking what it means to be a woman in marriage from my history and, and using my will, my way, my perspective. I'm taking those things. And then we wonder what happens when a great contrast shows up in our marriage. It's because we're supposed to be receiving how to have continual victory in our marriage from God as a steward, not taking our own ideas and implanting them in our marriage as an owner. And we wonder why great contrasts show up. Even our children, I'm learning in my own life that my children ha have been given to me by God, but they belong to him. God said, let us make man in our image. God didn't have me and Kanika have children so that we can have lookalikes. He had me and Kanika have children so that he could have lookalikes. This is about him. And the more we take instead of receive, what God has given us, the more things go downhill and contrast begin to show up. I hope you're hearing me because I know Adam and Eve would say, man, I wish somebody gave us the reminder. David would say, I wish somebody told us, don't take Ananias and Sapphira. I shouldn't have took any for myself, but given it to all to God. Well, you're getting the reminder today. Aiken for all of us who are the Aikens. And that's all of us from time to time. Put it down. Our nation has been taking. And you know just as well as I know. And it says the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel because our nation has been taking even the definition of life. Jeremiah 1 5. Forget about that, I guess. It says that I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, but we've been taking the definition and deciding when life begins on our own and wondering why chaos is ensuing and contrast is showing up. We've taken the definition of justice. Forget Psalm 89, 14 that says righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. They are twin towers. That is not a big brother, little brother system. And if Christians would just receive the word of God instead of taking it and realigning it and adjusting it for the way we feel and the way we operate, something that took 400 years can take four seconds because we're not taking. We're receiving. We're taking the definition of sin to be whatever you think is right with, within your own eyes. But God is saying, listen, guys, I have already given you victory in the construct of my word. I need you to receive that and not take your own ideas. And you wonder why there's a great contrast that has shown up. And since we're talking about the people of God here, the church has been taking. We've been building our church and not building his church. Even though Matthew 16 says you will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
I will build my church, Matthew 16 says, but we've been building our church while using his name whenever it's convenient. And we wonder why a great contrast showed up in March. We can't even come to the building. God said, get out. You think that the chaos in the world, much like I spent a whole lot of time thinking, is because the world. It's because of all of the things that are happening in the world, all of the things that people are taking out there. This is Achan and the sons of Israel. These are God's people. These are God's people that we're dealing with. That's why 2 Chronicles 7, 14 is so critical. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, if they will pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I can heal the land. Then I can forgive their sins. I'm watching my people and my people are so busy looking at the world that they're forgetting that I'm looking at them. Achan, put it down. As a chaplain of the Dallas Cowboys, um, I'm a Cowboy fan. Uh, if you're not a Cowboy fan out there, um, I can't really help you with that. You might not be saved. Anyways, um, the Cowboy fans, listen, this is Dallas. It's Cowboy Nation, Cowboy Country. Everywhere I go as a chaplain of the Dallas Cowboys, there's a red carpet laid out. Anywhere we go, we have fans all over the place because it's really Cowboys Nation. And obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with the season this year or even if there's going to be a season this year. But the Cowboys are my boys, like most of you out there, I would assume. But what, I, what I'm saying is these boys, these boys were the boys in the 90s. Now, I know it's been a long time, but I got to gloat on the 90s for a second. 1993, 94, 96, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. I mean, the boys were in town. You hear me? The boys are in town. They had victory. Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Nate Newton, Darren Woodson. I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting there watching them get these victories. And they got victory, came back the next year, got victory, skipped a year, and got victory again. Now, if Emmett Smith were to call me right now, and he said that he needed me to come tie his shoes, I'd be right there, bruh. I, I, you, listen, you don't have to say another word. I got you because these dudes are titans in Dallas. If, Emmett, if, if, if Troy Aikman sneezed and needed someone to wipe his nose, I'd be right over because they are titans in Dallas. They are legends in Dallas. But guess what? As legendary as they are, as big time as they are, and the victories that they have received and the championships and the rings that they have on their fingers, as big time as it is, they cannot go into Jerry Jones facility and touch that trophy. Because even though they're a part of the winning Super Bowl team, the trophy belongs to Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys organization. If Michael Irvin were to go in there and decide, hey, I'm a champion, I've been given victory, I have victory, I executed the playbook and went and got victory, so that means I can go into Jerry Jones' facility and take the trophy? Immediately, they would go from champions to convicted felons. It would be a huge drop-off that would come immediately at the time that they took something that did not belong to them. If they call me after that, I'd be like, nah, bruh, I ain't gonna be able to help you. I ain't gonna be able to show up for you. You're gonna have to tie your own shoes, wipe your own nose, because I cannot help you. All of a sudden, your status will fall, not because you didn't win, but because you took something that belonged to the owner that does not belong to you. I hope we understand that Aiken took something. And the question is, what are we taking? In your own personal life, what are you taking? Because contrasts are showing up everywhere. And it's time for us to get back on track. It says the sons of Israel operated unfaithfully, even though they had victory. The sons of Israel operated unfaithfully. Achan in that moment chose his feelings over his faith. Achan in that moment chose covetousness over God's word. Achan in that moment chose himself over God. And he didn't show faith. The sons of Israel operated unfaithfully. They weren't faithful to the Lord. Man, 
I wish we can get God's people to come back to being faithful to the Lord. My dad always says, faith is acting like it is so, even when it's not so, so that it might be so simply because God said so. If Achan would have just waited on the Lord, Joshua 8, verse 2, we're in Joshua 7, but Joshua chapter 8, verse 2 says, hey, Joshua, I need you to go fight Ai a second time. Because in Joshua 7, he's fighting him the first time. In Joshua 8, they're going to go fight him a second time. And in Joshua 8, verse 2, the Lord says, oh, and by the way, the spoil is yours. You've got to be kidding me. By the way, all the spoil, you can have it. If Achan would have waited on the Lord instead of using his own ideas, if Achan and his family would have waited on the Lord and maintained faith in the Lord and pushed through and was a receiver of victory instead of a taker of self, God had the spoil for him. But he wasn't there to receive it because the contrast showed up for him and his family for taking something that wasn't his to begin with. And notice, it says that the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. If I was Joshua, I would have said, wait a minute, why are you mad at me? <laughs> what did we do? That was Achan. I need you to go talk to Achan and do something about Achan because that didn't have nothing to do with all of us. That's how God works. That's why 1 Corinthians 5, 6 says, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. This is the great team sport that when some of us are off track, the whole body is affected. That's why in 1 Corinthians 12, you see the body of Christ all fitted together. And every member is important to the functionality of that body. Y'all, we need everybody to put it down and have faith in God. Come on, Aiken. Drop it. We need your marriage. We need your family. We need your faithfulness. We need your church. We need you to be faithful. We need you to give your plans to God. We need you to go forward in the truth of God's word and not the feeling of yourself. We need everybody to help us win. Everybody is a part of this. My coach, when I was in high school, I'll close with this. He said, gave us a speech one day in high school, Duncanville Panthers, state champions in 98, by the way. Just wanted to throw that in. But as we were going to win that championship, our coach gave a chilling speech. And he just let us know, I don't care if you're the kicker. I don't care if you're a starter. I don't care if you're a backup. I don't care if you're helping people get water on the sideline. I don't care if it's I have to give you a towel so that I can use you to wave it to get the crowd going. We need everybody to submit to the process. We need everybody in order to win. We need everybody to be a part and to buy in. We need everybody to play their part. We don't need you to covet somebody else's job. I need you to do your job, do it full speed. And I need you to do it at the best of your ability. I need you to be a part of this. Because guys, as you know, I'm dying with leukemia. And I know firsthand that it only takes a little bit of cancer to infect the whole body. We don't need any cancers on this team. People complaining because they wish they had something other than what they've been given. We need people, people to receive what they've been given and go full speed with contentment and thanksgiving and gratitude and faithfulness to what you have been given, because if we can all do that together, we can all be champions together. That year in 1998, we went and won the state championship because everybody bought in. The anger of the Lord burned against all Israel, not just Achan. So for me as Achan and for all of the Achans that are out there, because Joshua is about to go to battle while the anger of the Lord burns. Achan, please, for the church of Jesus Christ, for all of us, put it down.